Hello and welcome back to another installment of Pokey Fodder. And in this video, we are talking Jurassic World Alive in my continuing coverage of version 2.0. In this video, we are going to talk about the Mammotherium Prime raid boss. But before I get into the details of how you, yes, you can take down this raid boss with just two of your friends or Alliance members, I want to let you know that you can catch me live on Twitch Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Fridays where we are going to A, do raid battles, B, do arena battles, and C, on Friday, we're going to do tournament battles. If you want to catch any or all of the live action, make sure you are following me on Twitter. As always, you can find links in the description below. Today is Tuesday, and now we have the Mammotherium raid on the screen. It's um, it's massive. You're not going to be able to miss this. And they do change spawns throughout the course of the day. So keep that in mind as well, that just because you don't have one within your radius at the moment, doesn't mean at a later point today you won't have one. Conversely, just because you have one in your, your radius circle now doesn't mean it'll be there all day. So go ahead and take care of that. Also, before I get into the rest of this video, I want to let you know that there is a problem with inviting iOS users. Um, for whatever reason, it just doesn't work. If the person you're trying to invite is using an Apple or an iPhone, it's uh, it's proving to be rather difficult. If you have an iPhone and you're inviting Android users, everything should be just fine. But the other way around, or if you're using Apple to Apple, it's not working for whatever reason. So hopefully there's a quick patch for that. But if you're having a problem getting into raids and you're not seeing the invites, that's going to be the reason why right there. I want to talk about the Mammotherium Prime Guide and how to defeat this. And in the gameplay, you will see that I had a team of four total and we, we took this down last night and um, really not overly difficult. In fact, if you follow these kind of guidelines, you should be just fine. The battle you're watching on the screen right now was done with zero boosts at least for me, and I was playing Dilloranosaurus. So no boost was relatively easy. I don't think we were ever in any like trouble of A, losing a single creature, and then B, losing the match. So the thing to keep in mind here is you are going to be capped at level 20 on whatever creature you bring. In this video and in my, my counter guide, my notes, we are using all legendaries because that is the highest class or highest tier of creature that you're allowed to use you can use epics you can use rares but they're all going to be capped at level 20 so keep that in mind additionally you are going to be capped at boosts so you can't have any section whether it be health attack or speed you can't have any any category over 10 boosts if for some reason you have one of your legendary creatures with 15 boosts on any one subject that is gonna be demoted down to just 10. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this raid is impossible to do solo. Um, yeah, it's impossible to do solo. You might be able to with optimal play and optimal boost, you might be able to take this out as a duo. Um, I don't know anybody who's done it, but it looks like it's set up that it could potentially be done. And then I'm gonna say with three creatures, it's pretty easy if you use the right combinations with four again the right combination is going to be extremely easy and everybody should be able to do this as long as you meet the minimum requirements if you want to bring in like a level 10 creature i don't think you're going to get the job done but as long as you are bringing in a specific mix of creatures at level 20 i don't think you're going to need boost and you should be successful every time now what's new about the mammotherium raid from yesterday's raid with the Sinoceratops is the fact that now we have a minion added into the mix. Another thing that is very important to know here is knocking out the minion doesn't mean anything other than your life gets a little bit easier. The entire goal is to knock out the main raid boss and you're going to have to do that two times regardless of if you ever knock out a minion or not. I'm going to say that I don't think I've ever defeated a raid boss where I didn't knock out the minion as well. And the minions are going to be there to cause problems for you attacking. They're there to distract. They're there to pull attacks away from the raid boss. They're there to buff the raid boss. They are there in order to distract you and your teammates. That is their entire function. So make sure you know this. Another thing to keep in mind is the creature that you are attacking is going to change throughout the course of each individual round 
and each individual battle. And what I mean by that is if you look on the sidebar over on the right hand side, it is going to say the order of moves. If you are picking a move that's going to target the lowest HP creature at the start of your turn, that might be the minion. But by the time it gets to your turn, based on the events that happen from creatures above you, it may no longer be the minion, it might be the raid boss. So keep that in mind. If you are truly going to optimally play against these raid bosses, you're going to have to coordinate with your teammates to find out what moves they're doing, who they are actually going to be attacking, and then what that's gonna do to any of your potential attacks. And finally, the last little bit of information before going into the specific details on this particular raid is make sure you have a well-rounded team. Now, in my opinion, this Mammotherium Prime is going to be a resilient creature, which means in theory, fierce creatures are going to counter it. And for the most part, that is entirely true. But having said that, despite having type advantage over Mammotherium, I don't think you could just roll out four straight raw damage dealers, four straight fierce creatures, and get the job done. I think uh, you're going to end up having more problems because you just don't have enough HP. And so for that reason alone, I highly recommend that you bring a healer into all of these raid battles. And in the legendary rarity of creatures, you have a couple of options. Dilaranosaurus, which is what I chose, and honestly, I think this is going to be the best of the options, or you could use, I think it's it's not, it's Paramoloch. You could use Paramoloch as a healer as well. It'll probably serve you just fine, but in my opinion, I think Dilarano is probably going to be the better of the two options to fill this role. Now, I mentioned earlier that you can defeat this raid boss with three creatures. And the reason why you can is because Dilaranosaurus is going to be your healer. The tips for using this is to heal every opportunity that you can. Think of your healer is doing a little bit of damage every like third turn and then healing the rest of the time it's not there to be an aggressor and it doesn't matter who is using dilaranosaurus on the team just to make sure that the person that uses it has it at level 20 it doesn't need any boost and they're going to be healing when it is time to heal the next key component to having the correct build is going to be raja and kylosaurus raja and kylosaurus has a lot of different abilities that are going to make it useful in this particular battle it can do a lot of buffs to the team it can do some shielding and then it just does nice overall consistent damage there's nothing that i absolutely love about raja and kylosaurus in this other than it's a great team player and so if you have a cornerstone of a healer and Raja and Kylosaurus, you're well on your way to forming a team that can beat this as a threesome or a foursome. At this point, you have two of the most important cornerstones to being successful in this raid. But what you need now is a damage dealer. You have three main options here, and one of them is actually rather surprising. Your first and probably best option is gonna be Tyrannolophosaurus. This creature has ways to distract your opponent, and it just does sheer damage, which is what you're looking for. Because remember, you have a healer that's not really going to attack very often, and then you have a Raja and Kylosaurus, which is kind of a utility creature feature here so it's going to do a lot of things it's going to do some damage but you need something now that's just going to do sheer raw damage and that's where tyrannolophosaur is going to be probably your best option now if that chomper is not available to you there's always allosinosaurus probably just a tier below simply because the instant charge with the stun Mammotherium Prime has something around a 70 or 80% resistance to stun, and you kind of know how little stun works anyways. But Allosinosaurus has a lot of nice things going for it because it can break shields, it can go through armor. It is just a nice, strong, raw damage dealer. And I will tell you that whenever I was successful taking this out as a three-team tandem, those are the three that we used, Dilaranosaurus, Raja and Kylosaurus, and Allosinosaurus. And I wanna say that we had either three or four turns left whenever we proved successful in taking out the Mammotherium, but we were never really in trouble. And my final recommendation for the fierce creature to do raw damage is going to be rather surprising, and that's Monolovetrodon. Monolovetrodon is flying under the radar in 2.0, and I think it's a very nice play, not only in raids, but also in the Battle of Arena. Monolovetrodon is almost as good as Magna Pyrrhiter, and maybe, just maybe, even better in the Battle Arenas. So this is a creature that you can definitely level up 
to level 20 or higher if you are looking for a fierce creature for your arena team and then give it double duty by using it in the in the raid bosses and really with those three creatures you should be successful as long as you're not making egregious plays if you are playing straight up healing when you're supposed to and doing the proper moves you should be fine so if you can knock it out with any of those three adding any fourth creature is just going to help you beat it that much quicker and one recommendation that i have for a fourth creature if you're really looking to put the hurt down is anki nitrosaurus anki nitrosaurus is going to be there just to tank all the big hits it's there to taunt which means it's going to distract the attackers away from the other creatures that are a little more vulnerable and take the brunt of the big hits now the reason why i would say you probably can't go dilaranosaurus raja and kylosaurus and anki is because i don't think you're going to deal enough damage over the course of 20 turns in order to knock this out you really do need that raw damage you can probably add any two of the four creatures that i listed here any of the three fierce or you can use the resilient creature and you will be successful it just depends on how much time you want to put into this battle and then you're going to get the rewards for this strike now what i understand is the the dna that you're going to get out of this incubator for the boss is going to be a jackpot lottery type system i hit the jackpot on this because as you'll see in a moment i got probably the maximum and i don't know that for sure but I think I may have got the maximum that you can get out of this incubator. So I got just over a thousand Velociraptor. I got just over a hundred Carnotaurus. I got 100 Spinosaurus Gen 2. And then yes, you are going to get Mammotherium. And as you can see, I got 125. Now other people, I believe only got 25 for this battle. I just happen to be one of the lucky ones. So there you have it. The keys to taking out the Mammotherium raid boss. I know I keep stressing this, but it is very important. This is a new mechanic, and I want to make sure that people are putting themselves in a position to be successful. Bring a healer, and then you can use Raja and Kylosaurus, or you could use Anki Nitrosaurus. They kind of both fill that same role. Their role is to tank the big hits, and that's what you're going to want because you're going to have some things that are a little less uh, bulky to take those big hits and then you're going to want to pair any of those up with some fierce creatures that are going to strictly do raw damage if you follow this guide you should be successful with three and if you add a fourth person into it well just enjoy your easy rewards tomorrow is wednesday and that means that we have mortem rex on deck i am really excited to try to take out this fierce creature that is apex rarity i've never seen it I'm eagerly anticipating it and I don't think it's going to be easy. And I'm just going to tell you now, I think that this one is set up so that not everybody is going to be able to complete the raid battle. But I will be working throughout today to come up with strats to help you guys put your best foot forward. If you found this video useful, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on those alert notifications so you know when the next video goes live. There are a lot of new things to cover in Jurassic World Alive version 2.0, and I don't want you to miss out on any of the information. That's all I've got for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and until next time.